Uh, let, me, let me say this about, about health care. One, I didn't send a team of anybody to meet with Barack Obama. I wish he'd have given me a call. I, I wish when he was putting together his health care plan, he'd have had the courtesy and, and perhaps the judgment to say, let me, let me talk to a governor. Let's talk to somebody who's dealt with a real problem that, that understands this topic and get on the phone. I just said, Mr. President, you're going down a very, very bad path. Do not continue going down that path because what you're going to do is you're going to raise taxes on the American people. You're going to cut Medicare. Let's not forget, only one president has ever cut Medicare for seniors in this country, and it's Barack Obama. We're going to remind him of that time and time again. And finally, the plan we put in place in Massachusetts, it deals with the 8% of our people who didn't have insurance. The 92% of people who did have insurance, nothing changes for them. If I'm president of the United States, we're going to get rid of Obamacare and return under our Constitution, the 10th Amendment, the responsibility and care of health care to the people in the states. I want to bring Governor Perry. You've heard this argument. I wonder which side you come down on. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm stunned because the, the fact of the matter is, you know, Michelle kind of hit the nail on the head when we talked about the individual mandate. Both of these gentlemen have been for the individual mandate. And I'm even more stunned, Mitt, that you said you wish you could have talked to Obama and said uh, uh, you're going down the wrong path because that is exactly the path that you've taken Massachusetts. The Beacon Hill study itself said that there's been 18,000 jobs lost because of that individual mandate. The study continued to say that there have been over $8 billion of additional cost. I wish you could have had the conversation with the people of Massachusetts a long time before that phone call would have been with uh, the President Obama. Because the fact of the matter is, you are for individual mandates. And you can get up and stand up and talk about, you know, I'm against it now and I'm going to uh, 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 rescind Obamacare, I'm going to repeal Obamacare, but the record is very clear. You and Newt were for individual mandates. And that is the problem. And the question has been, who can stand on the stage, look Obama in the eye, and say, Obamacare is an abomination for this country, and I'm going to do that. And I can take that fight to him and win that fight. Governor Romney, a 30 second response. Uh, a good deal of what you said was right, some was wrong. Uh, Speaker Gingrich said that he was for a federal individual mandate. That's something I've always opposed. What we did in our state was designed by the people in our state for the deeds of our state. You believe in the 10th Amendment? I believe in the 10th Amendment. The people of Massachusetts favor our plan three to one. They don't like it, they can get rid of it. It's the great thing about a democracy where individuals under the 10th Amendment have the power to craft their own solutions. By the way, the, the problem with President Obama's plan is it does three things we didn't, in my opinion, among others. I understand we disagree on this, but among others. One, it raises taxes by $500 billion. We didn't raise taxes. Two, it cuts Medicare by $500 billion. We didn't do that either. And three, it doesn't just deal with the people that don't have insurance. It's a 2,000-page bill that takes over health care for all the American people. It is wrong for health care. It's wrong for the American people. It's unconstitutional. And I'm absolutely adamantly opposed to Obamacare. And if I'm the president of the United States, I will return to the people and the states the power they have under the Constitution. And they can craft the solutions they think are best for them. And my view, you had a mandate in your state. You mandated the girls at 12 years old how to get a vaccination for, for a sexually transmitted disease. So it's not like we have this big difference on mandates. We had different things we mandated over. I, I wanted to get people health insurance. Um, you want to get young girls a, a vaccine. There are differences. Governor, if we could I, ask Speaker Gingrich to respond. I, I just want to make one point that's historical. <clears throat> in 1993, in fighting Hillary Care, virtually every conservative saw the mandate as a less dangerous future than what Hillary was trying to do. The, the Heritage Foundation was a major advocate of it. After Hillary Care disappeared, it became more and more obvious that mandates have all sorts of problems built into them. People gradually tried to find other techniques. I frankly was floundering trying to find a way to make sure that people who could afford it were paying their hospital bills while still leaving it out for libertarians to not buy insurance. And that's what we were wrestling with. It's now clear that the mandate, I think, is clearly unconstitutional, but it started as a conservative effort to stop Hillary Care in the 1990s. Well, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm listening to you, Mitt, and I'm hearing you say all the right things, but I read your first book, and it said in there that your mandate in Massachusetts which should be the model for the country. And I know it came out of, of the, the reprint of the book, but, you know, I'm just saying, you were for individual mandates, my friend. You know what? You've raised that before, Rick. And uh, 
Your sister it, was, it was true but, then. No, no. <laughs> it's true now. Rick, I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> 10,000 bucks? $10,000 bet? I'm not in the betting business, oh, but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll okay. show you the, I, I wrote the, I'll, I'll show I wrote, you the book. I, I've got the book. And, uh, and we'll show it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I wrote the book. And I have it in Chapter 7. There's a section called the Massachusetts model. And I say, as close as I can quote, I say, in my view, each state should be able to, to fashion their own program for the specific needs of their distinct citizens. And then I go on to talk about the states being the laboratories of democracy, and we could learn from one another. I have not said in that book, first edition or the latest edition, anything about our plan being a national mo model imposed on the nation. The right course for America, and I've said this during the debates last time around, I'll say it now and time again, is to let individual states, this is a remarkable nation, this idea of federalism is so extraordinary. Let states craft their own solutions, don't have Obamacare put on us by the federal government. Mm -hmm.